Good morning, Diamond Bar citizens, and welcome to today's town council meeting where I will be talking about Obamacare. First, let me talk about my dad. He's a physician and he practices in a low income area. He loves his job. He's always telling me, hey, Amy, you should become a doctor because for other reasons, among other reasons, um, he says it's so, so fulfilling and he's always so happy to be helping people every day for his career. But he always, there's always those days where he comes home brokenhearted because there are always those few people that he has to turn away just because they can't afford to pay their medical bills. Um, they either have to go home and deal with their illness themselves or they go to the ER where they wait hours on end until they get to be treated. Now I know Diamond Bar is a pretty affluent city so you may not find the story relatable or relevant, but I know that the city is very focused on uh, charity and community service and just generally giving to others. So advocating uh, health care for everyone should be on your list of things to advocate as well. And I know a lot of you are successful employers and you should know that Health Pack Online, a website dedicated to informing people about health care around the nation, says that uninsured workers are more likely to take sick days off. And you know, as employers, if your employees keep on taking days off, there's less efficiency in your workforce. This can mean uh, less revenue coming in or, on a broader scale, less money going into the economy. So supporting Obamacare is something to think about. And I'm going to help you do that today by arguing the constitutionality of Obamacare. I have three main arguments I'm going to make. First, Obamacare is one step away from being terminated because of the false belief that it is unconstitutional. Next, I'm going to argue that Obamacare is in fact constitutional. And lastly, I'm going to argue that Obamacare will not worsen our federal deficit if it is being con continued. So I know with the general opinion in this room, Obamacare, the fact that Obamacare is about to be discontinued is a good thing, right? Wrong. First of all, let's go over, over some numbers. Um, according to Arthur Garson, PhD, MD of the Journal of the Association of Academic Medical Colleges, he states that 46 million people in America are uninsured. 129 million people have a pre-existing condition. Some of you may actually have a pre-existing condition. Um, and you can have diabetes or asthma or hypertension or you know people who have these conditions. And you know that you have to go to the doctor often to just keep your health in check. And this is great if you have health insurance paying for your trips to the doctor. But if you have a pre-existing condition and you're trying to find health care, it's very difficult to find affordable health care because insurance companies simply don't want to pay for all of your doctor visits and all the medication that you're, you might have to take. This fact is worsened when you, when you see healthcare.gov report that um, people are starting to rely more on uh, individual healthcare plans than their healthcare plans provided by their employers. This makes sense, right, because lately in the past few years, the employment rate hasn't shown the prettiest of numbers. So more people are needing to depend on individual health care plans, but sometimes they can't because of their pre-existing conditions. Also, in uh, USA Today, Mary Coleman said in 2004, people, um, cities with a large population of, of uninsured people run the risk of shutting down hospitals and health care facilities and losing doctors. For example, in LA, 10 million people don't have health insurance. Because of this, 18 hospital, 18 public, public medical facilities and one hospital has had to be shut down. This is because uh, doctors and hospitals are not being compensated properly when they treat all these uninsured people. Normally, insurance companies will cover the health care costs that hospitals charge, but with all these uninsured people, they don't have that money. So there's a lack of funding, and the, the, the buildings, the medical facilities, they have to shut down. Uh, this means that hospitals that stay open experience a lot of crowding, and doctors are met with 
um, an influx of new patients to treat. And they're just swamped with patients, and this can cause a decline of uh, proper health care quality. This is the current state that we are in now and have in the past. Imagine how this will be if Obamacare is discontinued in the future. So maybe you're starting to warm up to the idea of supporting Obamacare a little bit, but you may be wondering, what about the individual mandate? How is that constitutional making people pay for health insurance? Well, in uh, the Constitution under Article 1, Section 8, it says that um, the tax is lawful from Congress if uh, the tax is beneficial to the general public. Seeing as in the individual mandate is a tax and it's used to provide health care for the entire nation, this is a beneficial tax for the general public. Um, so logically, this means that Obamacare is completely constitutional because it is used to, gen to benefit the general public. Um, also, under the Commerce Clause, the government is uh, the government is responsible for managing the healthcare business anyway. So it's their responsibility to manage uh, what goes on in, a, in the healthcare industry. And lastly, Simon Lazarus of the American Constitution Society is an expert on interpreting and analyzing the Constitution. He says that in the Bill of Rights, nowhere does it say that Congress cannot exercise its tax and spend authority to prescribe mandatory health care. <coughs> Obamacare, in a sense, is like Medicare or Medicaid, where it, in, where it uh, provides health insurance for everyone, but it doesn't limit health insurance to just the elderly population or low-income population. It provides health care for everyone, including yourself. Everyone is going to have, everyone in the nation is going to have health care and access to affordable health care. Now, let me address one of your big concerns. I know that a lot of you are concerned that uh, continuing Obamacare will <coughs> worsen our federal deficit. You may agree with Douglas Holtz Eakin of the New York Times when he says, and I quote, the health care reform will raise, not lower, our federal deficit. But if you look at a report, an untitled report in 2009 from the Congressional Budget Office, they have reported and estimated and calculated a net reduction of $143 billion in the federal deficit if Obamacare is continued. Also, keep in mind that there are 300 million Americans in, um, in this country. 46 million Americans are uninsured. This, doing some simple math, this is about 15% of the population. We're only going to provide health care for 15% of the population. In 2009, the, uh, the President Obama uh, addressed the American Medical Association and said that if people are, are satisfied with their current health care plan, people who are already insured, then they don't have to change a thing. We're not going to be spending money on people who already have health insurance. Obamacare will only fund health insurance for people who don't have it and need it. So more money will be spent more money will be going into the federal government than the federal government will be spending on people who are uninsured. So Obamacare will not be, will not be uh, seen as something that will worsen the federal deficit. To wrap things up, I, uh, I argue <coughs> the constitutionality of Obamacare today. I argue three main points. First, I argue that Obamacare is one step away from being destroyed because of the fact that the false belief that um, it is unconstitutional. Next, I argue that it is in fact constitutional by providing evidence from the Constitution. And lastly, I argue that continuing um, Obamacare will not ruin or not worsen our federal deficit. Hopefully, you've changed your stance on this issue, and by supporting Obamacare, you can um, help to provide help to provide health care for everyone in the nation by contributing to your country. Thank you for your time.